Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Artoria have just released the version 4 firmware for the Micro Freak, and this update brings some nice quality of life uh, upgrades, and most importantly, an exciting new digital oscillator type, which is another wavetable oscillator, but we can now import our own wavetables, which is superb. Uh, obviously, very excited to get to the uh, wavetable side of things, but uh, just quickly, let's discuss the uh, other little upgrades that we get with this update. So the first update is really easy to explain, and it's one that I think uh, a lot of people are going to like if you are doing a lot of sound design on the Microfreak. Um, I've always found, as have a number of other people I'm sure, that the control over these knobs here it takes a long time to go from top to bottom, lots of turning, uh, if you want to get to minimum or maximum. So uh, now, uh, by default, if you hold down shift and turn the knob, it moves a lot faster. There we go, <laughs> as simple as that. Uh, it makes a hell of a difference when you're building patches. If you would like to have that behavior as the default, if you come into the utility menu and come down to browsing and then we're going down to uh, oscillator knob speed here if you come in here and set that to fast do you know what i might do that now um now the default speed is that new fast speed and if you want to have finer control you can hold down shift uh, like that excellent simple useful uh just a general upgrade to the usability of the synth thumbs up so the next upgrade is to do with the chord mode. So a uh, quick refresher, if you hold down the paraphonic button and play in a chord, you are now in chord mode. And as you play notes, uh, it will play a chord instead. Let's choose A minor seven, because that sounds good played everywhere. Uh, you can also layer on top of this the um, scales mode to constrain these chords to scales and so on. So in the previous version of the firmware, one of the um, bugbears really, I think, if we're honest, uh, was that if we were to be in chord mode and come to say, record a sequence, or something, um, what would happen if I played this um, sequence in the old version is that you would just get the single notes that I played rather than the chords. If I play it now, we actually get the chords. So that's a, a big update for sure. One thing to be aware here um, with this new functionality is if you, obviously if you um, go back to mono mode, then you're just going to get single notes. If you turn paraphonic mode back on, you're not getting the chords. And if we look inside the uh, sequencer, um, so if we look inside the sequencer, we look at the different steps here, uh, you'll see that um, you're not actually um, recording the chords in. So if you come out of chord mode, you do lose the chords that are in there, which can be a disadvantage in some situations, but on balance, it does allow a couple of interesting um, creative opportunities so for example we could be um playing that uh, chord in the sequence again and we could change that chord for something else during the performance to get something new or to find new tonalities within there the other thing that this means because the notes aren't actually directly recorded in there is if we come into uh, the scale mode here and start constraining things to scales then we're going to find um, new sequences as well so yeah so so in some situations it may well be that it not uh, actually writing the chords into the sequence that might be a disadvantage but on balance i think being able to shift those around so freely without having to rewrite your sequence is probably on balance uh, the better situation i believe now the chords also get transmitted by midi uh, which they weren't uh, previously so let's get on to the main event, which surely is the new oscillator type. You can find this one right at the end uh, after harm, but before the vocoder, and it's called wave user. And this is a wavetable oscillator. 
And now you might be thinking if you've um, got a Mic Freak, don't we already have a wavetable oscillator? And the answer is yes. Um, we have the wavetables borrowed from the plats. Um, the difference here first is that the shape control gives us a bit crusher rather than a chorus, which we get, which can give us all sorts of raw or glistening textures on top of what we get from the wavetable itself. But more importantly, um, we can import our own wavetables, hence the user part of the name. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about the ins and outs of this uh, oscillator. But first, let's just quickly talk about what a wavetable uh, actually is. So one way that we can implement a, a digital oscillator is essentially to have a an audio file which contains a single cycle of a waveform. Now, if you were to play back this audio file, you'd basically just hear a click, if that. But if we loop this waveform, what we get is the shape of an oscillator and we get the sound that this oscillator makes. If we play that audio file back slower, we get a lower frequency, therefore a lower pitch. If we play it back faster, then we're going to get a higher frequency and a higher pitch. So in a wavetable, rather than having an audio file which only contains one wave shape, you have an audio file which contains a bunch of different shapes, single cycles of an oscillator in sequence. And by playing back these wave shapes and scanning through the table, and you can scan through the table however you want, sequentially, randomly, you can do it very quickly or very slowly, but by moving through the wavetable and looping these different waveforms, we will get an evolution of a sound. So this is just another way of uh, creating timbral changes um, by changing the wave shape that we are playing back. There are other things that you can do in terms of cross-fading and how you morph between the different waves. Uh, this is a very basic description of what's going on here. But essentially, that's what a wavetable is. It's an audio file with a bunch of different single cycles that we can scan through to get different sounds. So in this uh, oscillator, the wave control will allow us to select one of 16 different tables. <laughs> And the timbre control allows us to scan through that wavetable. So if we hold down a note here and scan through the table, we can hear that we're getting all of these different sounds. From the wavetable and as we change banks, sorry, rather change tables, we'll get a different set of timbres. So some of these will sound almost like a filter opening because maybe the wavetable was made by recording the sounds of a filter opening. You can get different octaves uh, by doubling the wave shapes. And as I say, we also have a bit crusher here. which allows us to get lots of different sounds. And by modulating the timbre control, in particular, we can get um, various different uh, uh, shapes of the sound. So for example, an obvious thing to do would be to send our envelope to the timbre control. Maybe just go up full, give it a bit of attack and a bit of decay, maybe a bit low sustain. And of course, moving to different wavetables will get very different sounds. But that same movement through the table, so the same shape. And of course we can modulate this any way we wanted. We could send it to the pressure and allow us to articulate it by how we're holding down the notes and so on. Uh, so in terms of uh, what you get here in 
a bank of wavetables is we get 16 different wavetables. And within those wavetables, there are 32 different um, uh, wave shapes or cycles, as they're called. And then the timer knob allows us to iterate through them and crossfade across them. So, how do you import your own wavetables? So uh, once you have installed the new version of the MIDI control center and updated your MicroFreak, and you come into the MicroFreak uh, section here with your MicroFreak connected, of course, you will have a new tab here called wavetables. And this is where we manage our wavetables, unsurprisingly. So uh, you will have the factory set of wavetables, the factory bank of wavetables. You can see here that it contains those 16 different wavetables here. Now, if we want to create our own bank of wavetables, we can do so. We can click new bank, give it a name and hit enter there. And now we have an empty bank. Uh, you can only have one bank on the MicroFreak at once uh, and each bank contains the 16 uh, wavetables. So you can create as many uh, banks as you want offline here and then uh, switch them in and out on the synth uh, as you need. So uh, you can create a wavetable in quotes properly and the uh, uh, manual has some information about the specification for the wavetable. It's a bit like the serum format, but it's fewer um, cycles within each table. So I don't know whether they're directly compatible. I don't have serum, uh, so I can't really comment. But um, what's nice is that they have implemented a system whereby you can import a, a wave or a file and the MIDI control center will do some magic to it to make it work as a wavetable. So you can basically import any audio and it will convert it to a wavetable uh, for you to try out. Uh, and you just do this by clicking on the wavetable slot that you want to edit, go to import and uh, replace wavetable A1. We can choose any wave file, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and double click on it and it will be imported in as a wavetable. There we go, import successful, and it will appear in this slot here. We can then move on to the next slot and import something else. So um, I um, spent uh, quite a lot of time uh, just playing around with various different uh, audio files to see whether they would work as wavetables, and the conversion worked fine. Ultimately, uh, most of them came out sounding very thin, uh, uh, sort of a bit a bit weird in the way they transitioned. Uh, but most importantly, they were all pitched way too high, like octaves higher than is useful. You had to go down to the bottom octave to get like anything approaching a useful bass and sort of octaves two and three were sort of inaudibly high pitched. So although you can just throw anything in and it's nice to... Um, uh, experiment with that. Um, I took a look again at the specifications to try and work out whether there was a um, a recipe for creating your own wavetables that's going to work in most places if you don't have something like Serum. If all you've got is even just Audacity, um, I've come up with a recipe that uh, works in terms of creating your own wavetables uh, that um, actually sound right on the Microfreak. So let's take a look at that. I'll show my working and then we'll import a couple of um, files that I've treated in this way and see how they sound. So quickly, just a little bit of maths so that uh, if people are interested, they can see where these numbers are coming from. So um, in terms of making a wavetable, we're just going to make an audio file. And I'm going to assume that we're working at 44.1 kilohertz because generally you are. So a couple of facts about the format that the MicroFreak uh, expects. It is 32 cycles or waveforms within a wavetable. And each of those waveforms should be 2048 samples long. So that means that the whole wavetable is uh, 65,536 samples in length. Okay, so if we uh, take that length, and we want to work out how long that audio file should be in seconds, we can take the uh, number of samples 
divided by the sample rate, which gives us about 1.486 seconds, about a second and a half. So if we're going to try and create a audio file that um, the microfreak is going to make the best of when it's turned into a wavetable, we're going to want to make sure that it's about a second and a half long give or take we're not being totally accurate here from my testing you get good results as long as you basically stick to a second and a half so um, within that time uh, there are 32 waveforms so if we divide by 32 each uh, waveform should be 0.04643 seconds in length um, why do we need to know that well we want to work out from that what frequency or what pitch we should be playing any notes in at. So uh, if we take that number um, and divide one by it, we get 21.5533 or thereabouts hertz. Um, so that's the frequency of the note that is going to work best within the Microfreaks uh, wavetable. So assuming A uh, equals for 40 hertz, which uh, it does um, most of the time, that's uh, basically the lowest F you can play in most cases about 21 cents flat um, so the recipe if you don't care about the maths is simply play a low f as low as you can go uh, ideally tuning it a bit flat so 31 cents flat for about 1.5 seconds and in that 1.5 seconds we want to have as much time or change as we want represented inside our uh, wavetable so, for example, if I wanted to create a wavetable from uh, the Microfreak itself, um, so let's say I wanted to use, say, the, uh, maybe the saw, uh, saw X sound here, and maybe we want to modulate the wave control to get a big part of our sound. What I'll do is I will set the wave control to be modulated uh, by the envelope. Um, it doesn't really matter whether you set it to work with the envelope or the uh, cycling envelope on the uh, microfreak because the nice thing about the microfreak is it does tell you the length of the segments in the envelope in seconds. So um, I'll just go with the envelope here, wave, we'll do the full range here. And then I'll set my attack to be uh, about 1.5. Uh, I'll put the sustain down to the bottom so I can hear it finish sort of dead on there. I'll also turn off the amp mod so it stays loud the whole time. Uh, okay, uh, and if I take that patch and I go down as low as I can find. And I also want to tune it slightly um, flat as well, which you can actually do on the uh, Mark Freak in the miscellaneous settings. I think we have a master. No, it's not in there. My bad. Oh, uh, well, it's literally called master tuning there. Yeah, uh, master tuning there, sent offset. We can take that down by 21, 22, something like that. So if we take that sound there and we record it, we chop it so that it starts at the start of it and ends at that drop just there and import it as a wavetable, that's going to give us the best possible chance to get something that sounds right inside the microfreak when we import it. So just coming back to the MIDI control center, I've imported uh, two files which sort of adhere to this sort of 1.5 second rule i've left the other one in here as well just for comparison uh, and in order to send this bank uh, across to the microfreak all we have to do is click send to microfreak it takes just a couple of seconds um, any slot that you leave empty will have a basic wavetable that sort of goes from sine or triangle up to like a sawtooth um, which is just a useful sound there so if you do um overshoot when you're trying to find the particular wavetable that you're looking for you're at least still get some sounds happening um and that's nearly done it doesn't take too long um right let's take a listen to how they sound okay so we're just on initialized patch with uh those wavetables that we've just loaded in there so this is the sort of random 
file that I loaded in, which was I think like a brass loop or something, or just even just a sustained brass note from one of the Spitfire libraries, I think. And you can hear it's pretty thin sounding. Um, but I mean, if we uh, throw the envelope maybe on the timbre, so we're scanning using the envelope. I mean, certainly there's a vibe going on there, right? It's thin, but it's it's interesting. Some weirdness right up at the top of the wave table, I think. Uh, I mean, we gave that some pitch wobble, and... Uh, my kingdom for a reverb pedal right now. There's definitely something to it, even just literally just throwing in some random audio file. We've got something which is at the very least interesting sounding, right? Certainly not a timer we could have easily coaxed out of the Micro Freak um, previously. Uh, let's go to that pitch for uh, right, Let's go rid of everything, I think. Uh, let's try that next wavetable that I brought in, which is basically the same thing as that um, uh, patch that we made to import, actually. So you can hear that kind of sync sound going on there. Let's um, get that moving again by modulating the timbre. And it's kind of similar to the patch that we had previously, but it's got a different character to it. Character to it. We've got the ability now to add the bit crusher into the mix, and it's a bit meatier than the previous one. in it if we're feeling cheeky. So you can see how by importing something that the um, Microfreak is kind of designed to work with, if you like, um, we're getting a much more sort of um, uh, normal synth sound that we can work with, something that works a bit more across the whole range. And of course, if we wanted to make it thinner, we could apply a filter to, to do that. Whereas with the other one, we can't really dial the missing body back in. Uh, but playing uh, last night, I found that just sort of sticking in anything that was of that length um, could yield some really interesting results. So I just kind of made mouth noises <laughs> uh, for a second and a half. If we set this going slowly, maybe through the wave table. <laughs> it it's pretty cool. <laughs> As I say, give me, give me a delay pedal right this second and I will die a happy man. Again, we're just scanning through using the um, envelope going to the timbre there. But we don't just have to use the uh, envelope, of course, we could use something else. Maybe we could send the LFO there, give it a bit of wobble using a stepped LFO, perhaps. Um. Thank you. 
Maybe send the LFO to the uh, filter as well. This is literally me just going or something. Again, this one isn't pitched uh, as sensibly as the uh, one that was a synth sound, but it does scan more sensibly. Give me a reverb pedal and a delay pedal, and uh, it's very nearly Halloween, isn't it? So you can still just sort of send any audio in, and you might find gold, but certainly sticking to the uh, <laughs> certainly sticking to the um, one and a half second rule is going to give you uh, more consistent results, results that kind of sound more alike to what you put in. And certainly if you're trying to create a um, synth style or, or, or a sort of obliquely pitched sound, then uh, 21 cents lower than um, the lowest F you can play is going to give you the best results um, in uh, my testing anyway. So that's another cool little addition to the Micro Freak. I think it's, you know, it, it is worth commending Arturia for continuing to support this since uh, two and a half years after its release and, and continuing to add cool new stuff to it, like almost twice a year. Um, I think probably it's, my, my gut feeling is that it's, it's a bit of a passion project for them uh, and they're kind of using it as a platform for just doing cool stuff and the fact that it's in such an inexpensive little sense I think is is really really nice so yeah just thumbs up and um, let's look forward to version 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 of the firmware as well fingers crossed anyway. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, then as always, it is massively appreciated if you could give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, so that you miss out on any upcoming synth fun. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, take care. Bye bye.